Today's technological age is run by machines. From the industrial revolution to the digital, machines have been responsible for speeding us through the 21st century. Mainly by providing a faster means of transport, whether it's information, resources or people. From their inception, vehicles have been a major driving force from a simple wheel to ships that glide on the sea. Ships can carry megatons of cargo across seas. They have been in service to humanity for decades and will continue to do so. But there is a saying in India, with the gift of life comes the certainty of death. And machines are no exception to this fate. See, ship breaking is a very, very important industry. According to me, it's a environment friendly industry. In this documentary, you will see how even after their demise, ships continue to be useful in ways which benefit over 150,000 workers and a nation's economy. Ships have a lifespan of 30 to 40 years. Beyond this lifespan, sustaining a ship is a liability. Retired ships are either sunk into seas to create artificial reefs or recycled as a secondary source of steel. The main process of recycling the ship is called ship breaking, which is very labor intensive and considered a hazardous one around the world. If you calculate the total amount of energy and resources spent on producing the same quantity of steel, which is being generated by ship recyclers, you will come to know that this is definitely a environment friendly, environment friendly industry. Because if you want to produce steel out of uh, raw material procured in India, first that is mining, then coal, then the quantum of iron ore and coal required to produce one ton of steel is much, much higher in compared to the ship recycling. Ship breaking has always been a lucrative alternative to mining, especially for countries with limited iron deposits. But this industry is not an innovation of the modern age. Ship breaking has been practiced at places around the world for over three centuries. It started in England in 1838. Then, after the Second World War, the industry progressively moved from European countries to East Asian countries. Till 1980, East Asia dominated the ship breaking industry. The ship, ship breaking was uh, done by uh, the East, uh, East Asian nations other countries such as Japan, Korea, and Taiwan. But all of a sudden, uh, in the uh, 1980s, uh, uh, the, their labor condition and wages uh, increased dramatically. So, uh, it is, um, economically, it doesn't make sense to, uh, to break a ship. Because, uh, you know, uh, the ship breaking is most highly labor-intensive industry. So naturally speaking, uh, these jobs are moving from those countries to the, uh, the low labor cost uh, in countries such as India and Bangladesh and Pakistan. Currently, the shipbreaking industry in India is the biggest in the world. It has shipbreaking yards in Mumbai and in Alang. With over half the ships across the world scrapped at Alang, 
It is accurately called the biggest graveyard for ships. Alang, in the state of Gujarat, was an impoverished village in India. But in 1983, its exceptional location and features made it ideal for ship breaking. Its shipyard has a high tidal range, a 15 degree slope and a sand free coast making it easy for any ship despite its size to beach with ease during high tide. These features combined with the easy availability of cheap labor made Alang a successful ship breaking yard. Breaking at one point over 300 ships in a year. So let's see how they actually do it. The process of ship breaking is not very uh, complicated. And owners sell ships in two methods uh, to the ship recyclers. One is the cash buyers. Major chunk is sold through cash buyers. Second, also directly uh, through brokers or you can say shipping agents. They're not brokers, they're like shipping agents. They're agents who are organizing the sale purchase. Cash buyers are the people who sell it to the ship breakers. So actually for the ship breaker, the seller of the ship is the cash buying company. He is not connected to the owner directly. Ship breaker, so cash buys is like a conduit between the owner and the ship breaker. He buys for the cash buys, he releases his money to the cash buyer, cash buyer is in turn pays to the owner and keeps his profit or whatever deposits he has paid. That's a cash buyer's role. He, then we beach the ship at our yard on the high tide, which is beached by a port, port pilot. And after beaching, we clean the ship totally. And then the people start boarding the ship with the workforce then they start cutting it piece piece by piece. In Alang, it is cut from the fore portion, front portion. It is like a slicing, slicing of a bread. You slice the front portion, bring it to the yard. Pull the ship again. Slice one more portion. Pull the ship again, bring it to the yard. And the sliced portion that come to your yard are further segregated into small pieces of rolling, re-rolling material, non-ferrous, is further segregated at the yard. If you see the cables that are produced, the cables are reused in small factories. If you see the motors, they are used, reused in the small factories. You see electrical switchboards reused in the small factories. If you come to wood, approximately 4,000 tons of wood per year is reused from the total ship recycling yard at Alam. That is in the form of panels, that is in the form of cabins, that is in the form of uh, furniture, tables, chairs, sofas, that is in the form of coal storages, that is in the form of plywood. So if we have to produce this much of wood here, you have to cut down at least 5,000 tons of jungles. So you are saving deforestation of 4,500 to 5,000 tons of jungle every year. Ship breakers are mostly funded by financial intermediates such as banks and cash buyers. After the deal is finalized, the ship is allowed to enter the country. The ship's captain sails the ship to its final destination. If the ship is already dead, then tugs are used to beach the ship to the yard. The ship is hauled in during high tide. Workers are called in and the first cut is auspiciously made on the nose of the ship. Recyclable material which can range from furniture, electronic equipment, thermocol to ship fuel is sold off to different contractors. Waste materials such as asbestos, fabrics and gaskets are segregated and later sent to a dumping site. The workers are categorized in many groups, with each being directed by a supervisor known as Mukadam. Workers are hired and fired according to the requirements of the ship breakers. The gas cutters are primarily divided into those who work on the ship and the rest who work on yards. This division is based on a gas cutter's experience and skill. 
The Ship Gas Cutters The ship gas cutters work directly aboard the ship. They have an understanding of risks and the experience needed to cut big chunks of the ship directly or indirectly, weakening them enough to be pulled down using a winch. Ship gas cutters are divided in two groups. One, cutting the body or hull of ships, called as tukra cutters. And the other, cutting cabins and cranes of ships, called as gala cutters. The winch. Winch is a complex pulley which requires helpers and an operator. Winch helpers are the ones who hook the winch wire where it is required and make sure the wire does not entangle when an operator is operating the winch. The winch and cranes are also used to pull big pieces of the ship onto the yard. The Yard Gas Cutters The Yard Gas Cutters handle slicing the ship chunks into smaller metal plates, which is the ultimate end of the ship's hull and its other metal parts. The Chhati Mukaddam supervises and orders the crane operator to segregate metal plates into various grades based on their size and thickness, which later decides the price of the plates. The Loaders The job of the loaders is loading and unloading goods from the truck, which mostly includes metal plates and gas cylinders. To determine how much steel is being sent, the truck is weighed on the yard, first without the plates and then later with them. Subtraction between these two amounts gives us the total weight of plates. Metal plates from the ship breaking industry are taken to the re-rolling mills. The re-rolling mills are considered as downstream industries where they melt steel and make rods out of it which are then primarily used in construction of buildings. Non-ferrous metals like copper, bronze and brass collected by workers known as Malpani are sold intact at comparatively higher prices such as a ship's bronze propeller And during this entire process, yard cleaners work on making sure that the yard is cleaned.
The entire modern process of cutting a ship is done using an acetylene torch, which made the modern shipbreaking industry profitable and possible. During the 1800s, wooden ships could be easily dismantled with primitive tools. The same was not possible for metal ships. For quite some time, it was too expensive to scrap metal ships. But at the beginning of the 19th century, the invention of the acetylene torch made cutting metal easier, efficient, quicker and also helped in reducing the number of workers and expenses required. Being economical is the principal reality that sustains the shipbreaking industry. Shipbreakers are always on a lookout for countries where labor is abundantly cheap and regulations weak, netting them more profit. To save additional costs, at times the shipbreakers get these ships to the yard without cleaning it for toxic materials. But in the case of shipbreaking, the cost of being cheap results in a vulgar disregard of safety and the well-being of the workers. On a daily basis, workers have to battle lethal hazards at these shipbreaking yards, which include fire, smoke and accidents caused by extremely heavy objects which fall and crush them under their weight. Half of these workers lack the safety equipments required. Gas cutting without masks, winch wire handling without the safety gloves and working without helmets. These are just some of the many hazards the workers face. A lot of times they end up getting toxicants on their skin while handling asbestos with their bare hands. The exposure to materials such as PCBs, lead and fuels have damaging effects on their bodies, which they carry through their entire lives. Here in Alan, asbestosis can cause chronic cough, then because of the cough, there, there is likelihood that they may get a congestive cardiac failure. But to be very honest with you, there is no uh, established medical faculty and fraternity and establishment also of the hospital. So we have a very less uh, access to all the disease and get it screened by the authority. The naturally the physical injury is because of the lack of safety at the uh, along ship breaking yard but lately it has diminished almost 20 percent and most of the cases which we found, number one is burn case, number two is accident case and other causes pure water and uh, residential uh, uh, accommodation etc. may be provided then they can improve as far as the sanitary part is concerned. But right now I have, we don't think that we can um, get rid of such disease because there is a poor hygienic condition the alum sheep breaking yard. Their standards of living are far worse. With a hand-to-mouth existence and due to a lack of knowledge about personal hygiene, these workers don't know that they are supposed to have proper functioning toilets and other amenities at the yards and at their living places. अब मान लीजिए कि हम लोग गैस कटिंग का काम करते हैं दूसरा काम तो हम लोग जानते नहीं और उम्र भी अब खत्म होने वाली है खत्म हो ही चुकी है तो दूसरा काम तो हम लोग सीख नहीं सकते तो मजबूरी बस करना पड़ता है लेकिन हाँ इतना जानते हैं कि हमारे जो पीढ़ी आने वाली है हमारे बच्चे जो हैं उनको गैस कटिंग नहीं करवा सकते
किसी भी कीमत में गैस कटिंग का काम नहीं करवा सकते क्यों कि गैस कटिंग में हम लोग जानते हैं कि गैस कटिंग में कितना जहाज तोड़ने में कितना परेशानी होता है एक तो सबसे पहली बात कि खतरा ज्यादा होता है खतरे का डर और हमेशा आग हाथ में रहता है ना मैडम थोड़ा भी पाइप लीकेज हो गया थोड़ा भी कुछ हो गया तो उस खतरा ही है इसके लिए अच्छा तो नहीं लगता है लेकिन दूसरा काम जानते नहीं दूसरा काम कहीं मिलता नहीं क्योंकि ये इंडिया है ना इंडिया की सरकारी ऐसी है कि यहाँ पे काम तो मिल ही नहीं सकता है क्यों कि प्रधानमंत्री का मतलब होता है देश का राजा और देश का राजा का मतलब ये होता है कि प्रजा को क्या चाहिए अब हमको क्या होता है कि वहां से उपास कर देता है यहाँ तक आता ही नहीं है और जो भी आता है हम लोगों को मिलता ही नहीं है और नहीं तो इतना मतलब बड़ा देश है अपना इतना बड़ा प्रधानमंत्री क्या किसी देश से हमारा देश कम है नहीं किसी देश से कम नहीं है लेकिन रोजी रोटी नहीं मिलता है और हर आदमी के लिए हर इंसान के लिए सिर्फ रोजी रोटी चाहिए अगर काम मिल जाए सबको बराबर और बराबर मजदूरी मिले तो अपना देश जो पहले लोग बोलते थे कि सोने की चिड़िया है तो सोने की चिड़िया कि मैं कहता हूं कि वो हीरे का चिड़िया हो जाएगा There are number of governance challenges as far as the management of seabreaking industries at Arlang is concerned. One, environmental laws and level laws have been violated regularly and consistently over the last 30 years. Even the Supreme Court directions and recommendations made by the Inter-Ministerial Committee for the safety of the workers as well as to take preventive measures for environmental pollutions have not been uh, you know, implemented uh, consistently. Second, uh, there are multiple authorities uh, which are operating both at the state level as well as central level without any coordination. For example, you have uh, Gujarat Maritime Board which is the nodal agency to monitor the day-to-day -day activities of seabreaking industries at Alang. You have Pollution Control Board, you have Coastal Regulation Zone Authority, you have Health Department, you have Labor Department at the state level and then you have Ministry of Environment and Forest uh, and Minister of Steel, Minister of Shipping at the central level, all these departments are functioning without any coordination. And this allows the sea breaking industries to exploit the situation and not to give any adequate attention uh, for the workers' rights and environmental uh, protection. Also, you find over the last uh, 30 years the number of uh, uh, accidental you know, deaths which are increasing over the last 30 years but no serious attempt has been made by either by the Gujarat Maritime Board or by the Health Department to register cases against those industries which have violated the rules and regulations. One only needs to look back at the blast that took place when the workers were dismantling an oil tanker to understand how many lives come at risk when shipbreakers ignore basic safety rules. Occupational hazards are always there. As long as they get the proper medical care, it should even it out. But even this is not the case. When accidents do occur in the yards, the patients are forced to travel to Bhavnagar, 56 kilometers from Alang, only to be transferred to a morgue once they reach the hospital. The efforts of the Gujarat Maritime Board to build a hospital had failed. So the NGO called Red Cross stood up and now a Red Cross hospital at least manages to provide some medical relief to the workers at the yards. Red Cross keeps their hospital open for a complete the whole day and then some smaller accidents are being treated immediately. But in a major accident, even patients doesn't come to us because they, the ship breaker feels difficulty for them. 
So they just immediately bring, bring them in their own way to private hospital say Bhavanda. There they are not getting any special. And so many patients are being saved like that. Coming back to the workings in the yards, the Gujarat Maritime Board had provided paid training to workers, where the workers had to bear the expenses and endure a day's pay cut. Worse still, the yards in Mumbai don't even have training yet. But as we said, the Gujarat Maritime Board had provided paid training. You must be wondering if this endeavour might have suffered the same fate as that of their hospital. Have faith. The Gujarat Maritime Board training program is still running. But now, it's for free. And it has been made compulsory for workers to attend the training even before they are allowed to join the yards. The Alang Sosia Ship Recycling and General Workers Association is responsible for these changes. Formed in 2005 at Alang and initiated in 2003 in Mumbai as Mumbai Port Trust Dock and General Employees Union. It has been responsible for many radical changes to the condition of the workers in Alang and Mumbai. At times, the employers are unaware or turn a blind eye to the problems of the workers. The union steps in and makes sure their problems are resolved. Over time, with persistence and support, the union started to prevail and has been successful in its endeavours. Not only getting compensations for the injured workers, but also a steady pension for the families of the four deceased workers in the history of Alang. Pension is such an issue which gives personally me a pleasure because we took it as a uh, challenge. We are we were pursuing the issue of pension to to the Chief Provident Fund Commissioner through our National Centre Hinda Madhur Sabha. At the same time, we were pursuing the issue from the local level authorities, and finally, after a great deal, the four families are now getting pension from the Provident Fund scheme, and now the families four families are. Uh, earning their bread and butter through pension. The occupational hazards that come with ship breaking, if not fatal, do a lifetime of damage to ship breaking workers. To make sure the workers are not suffering from any occupational diseases, eye damage, or infections, the union undertook various programs such as medical and eye checkup camps on regular basis. The union also organized small events such as umbrella distribution, where sturdy blue and yellow colored umbrellas were given to workers before the rains to help them in a small way to brave the elements. On Labor Day, that is the 1st of May around the world, the union managed to secure a paid leave for the workers to celebrate the entire day. It started off in the morning with the workers holding a peaceful rally to show their support to the union. And in the evening, a cultural program was organized with speeches where workers were reminded about their rights and their fight against injustice. Jahadariya, 
मजदूर जाएगा तो चालू रहेगा मजदूर नहीं जाएगा गेट के अंदर तो नहीं चलेगा तो हमारी जो हम अपने महत्व को समझे हम अपने श्रम को समझे द यूनियन हैज ग्रोन इन टेन इयर्स being recognized as the official voice of the ship breaking workers at international as well as national levels also due to the union's hard work the national human rights commission of india a well known authority on human rights is taking interest in the welfare of ship breaking workers our work in the nhrc for two decades now has involved action at two levels Uh, for those who have already become victims in one way or the other trying to ensure that either the state where the law requires the state to do it gives compensation or where it is where you can pin part responsibility on the employer that the state acts to ensure that the employer bears his responsibility under the act and make an issues compensation but the broader remit that we have in our, our broader concern is to ensure that these things don't happen to try to get the state to exercise or to implement the acts to ensure that officials do the work that they are expected to do under the various laws and that the workplace becomes safer for workers in a variety of occupations and trades so that's really been the focus of our work The Indian workers in the ship breaking industry deserve more respect and encouragement from the Indian government and its profiteers. This industry benefits India's infrastructure by providing an alternative source of cheap iron, wood and fuel to remove the pressure on its natural resources, helping to stabilize the economy. At a grassroots level, we can look at how it provides employment opportunities for more than 60000 workers directly and 100000 workers indirectly hailing from various states of the country helping to put food on their families plates though it is a fact that yards like alang have been transformed into an environmental wasteland due to this industry but Isn't this a similar consequence shared by other resources based industries? If you see a sh- the recycling of a ship, once a ship is broken, every part of the ship is again used. I would say that nearly 90% of the material which comes out of the ship breaking is recycled. So I would call ship breaking as a green industry. Yes. To the effect, to the extent ship breaking activity is done on the beaches marine life is destroyed there is no doubt about it marine life is destroyed and sometimes in the ships we also get nuclear waste lots of contamination this is not because of the ship breaking industry it is because of the weak regulatory mechanisms if you compare any of the chemical industries or any other industries like tanneries or uh, uh, chemical industries they are also polluting i would say any industrial activity after the industrial revolution when commodity production started and where uh, production processing mining manufacturing etc is done every activity is pollutes the environment every activity in india the future of workers has taken a turn for the better due to the union's effort and more importantly their own efforts but the union does not intend to stop at india its purpose to balance the power between the workers and the ship breakers is still a work in progress It intends to standardize workers rights all over the South Asian ship breaking industry so that ship breakers cannot trade human lives for profits. The message from the stakeholders is clear. Well, governments need to pull up their socks. At, at the moment, governments are simply not doing enough. 
So I would urge the government of India to coordinate and work for the welfare of the whole keep breathing industry. And please be good monitoring agencies. And there should be a tripartite social dialogue. Because the union can only be an organization who can collectively bargain. And also, if you are alone, you will never manage to, uh, to give a response to the employers and their agreements. But it is not only the government. Entrepreneurship of the shipbreakers is not progressive type. So, I want to say that please don't take shortcuts. Be more responsible. Does not cost you more. And also, there is not an organized type of labor. But organizing will remain an ongoing process. So, it's a very simple message. Organize, organize, organize.